Mommy's trying to film a video. Oh, thank you very much. Hello, beautiful, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to... <laughs> Hello, beautiful, welcome back to my channel, and welcome to this video that's gonna be a perfume haul. I have a huge, huge bucket right here of perfumes that we are gonna be talking about, and this is my dog, Kaisa. She's very cuddly today, so she'll be here for a little bit. We are just gonna go through these perfumes. I have been accumulating these since my last perfume haul, which I think was about six months ago. I will leave that in the description box. And I'm just gonna go through these. I'm gonna let you know why I picked them, how I feel about them. A couple of these were sent in PR, and I'll let you know about that as well. I'm gonna go through all the notes and letting you know if I think that they, well, if I think they're smelling good or not. And apparently we have a cuddle buddy. Cuddle buddy. <laughs> I don't know when this video is going up, but I am filming this uh, after the video where I let you know that my uh, sweet little dog Kaisa that is right here was going to the vet and we have been to the vet now and unfortunately she does have to extract her tooth, but the vet said that she's not in pain at least. So if you're not watching my vlog channel, this might be your little update on that, but we have uh, scheduled the surgery for her so that she's able to extract the tooth, but so far she's not in pain and she's not in any kind of like she doesn't have an infection but there is a risk that she might be in the future so obviously we're gonna do what's best for her and extract that tooth i am a freaking pro as well i bought some of these like little perfume strips i just need to get rid of kaisa because i don't want to spray perfume on her so you need to go and lie in your bed sweetie let me fix that Doggy is in the dog bed. Let me pull up my notes and we can start. Okay, I'm just gonna start with the order that I have them here saved in my notes. So we're starting with the Kayali Jam Pistachio Gelato and I have this in... <laughs> I have this in two versions. So I bought this one myself and you can see I've used this quite a lot. I've really been enjoying this one and they actually sent me the full size. The brand sent me the full size and I am so in love with this perfume. The notes of this one is pistachio, bergamot, ice cream, hazelnut, rum, cardamom. There is a lot of notes in here as you can see yourself. Then there is a bunch of like fruity and florally notes in here, but I will say I cannot, I cannot tell any of those notes. I cannot tell really any of that. I think it's like the florals and the, the fruits that you're seeing here. I think they're just part of like, just creating the whole ambience of this perfume. But what I'm smelling is the marshmallows, the whipped cream, the cotton candy, a little bit of the uh, cocoa like cacao in the background and then I smell the pistachio ice cream and the rum the rum is what's giving this it almost like adult feel like it's not a kiddish ice cream this is an adult ice cream because it has some rum in it and I will say I've really fallen head over heels for a boozy note in a perfume we're gonna talk about a couple of others at least one more I think in this selection that has a boozy note within the notes and I really love it and it just takes the fragrance to somehow a more sophisticated place. I will say this is a very lactic perfume saying meaning that it has a little bit of a milky like the whipped cream and ice cream kind of a note in it and some people when they hear that they're like ew who wants to smell like milk and it's not like you're smelling like milk on your skin but a milky perfume does have a certain scent to it and I definitely say if you've never worn a milky perfume before we're going to talk about one more in this video definitely say spray it on your skin try it out or buy the smallest bottle or get a sample or something because it doesn't smell amazing on everyone I love it though and this one is sweet pistachio that rum it's just one of the few sweet perfumes ever that I've actually liked. I'm not a sweet perfume kind of a person. It's not my journey. I love green perfumes. I love spicy perfumes. I love citrusy perfumes. I love fruity perfumes, which is what you're gonna see in this whole thing here. I love aquatic perfumes. Ugh, I love it. Sweet gourmand cotton candy. It's not my journey, but this one, this one is something else. I absolutely love this one and I'm so excited that I can now freely spray as much as I want of this one because they were so kind to give me a full size. Next one that I have here is this one here. It's from Fleur and it is Tangerine Boy. This one is a very fruity, citrusy perfume, but it is very much tangerine. 
it smells in Sweden tangerines are I'm Swedish if you didn't know I'm Swedish but I'm living in Texas it is very much associated with Christmas so if this had just had a little bit of like cinnamon or cloves in there this would have been a Christmas scent for me but I'm thinking that I could probably mix this one with a spicy perfume and to get that like Christmas feeling uh, and I understand the tangerines for Christmas is a very Swedish thing I don't think that anyone else is doing that but we love us tangerines for Christmas let me just tell you that this one has lemon ginger black pepper tangerine apple jasmine amber and moss and it is very lemon and tangerine definitely it just is a really beautiful perfume it's very fresh it's definitely a nice going into summer scent and it's a really nice fruity perfume if you wanted to stay away from the typical citrusy ones or if you don't like the ones that are a little bit more fruity and sweet like raspberry or something like that i really really like this one the only thing that i don't love about this one is that the longevity is not amazing on this one but i do love how it smells and i have been mixing this a bit but now i need to mix it with something that's like cinnamon and cloves i do have something here like that i wonder how that would smell it's really beautiful. I got this at Sephora. I bought it myself. And as you can see, I have actually used uh, quite a bit of it. I think it's really beautiful. And I'm excited to bring it out now for summer. Because I think it's going to be amazing for summer. Next one here is Sunset Hour. Oh my. Ooh, I have it here. It is Goldfield and Banks. And I had a sampler set by Goldfield and Banks. And I love a bunch of the fragrances in there. But my absolute favorite was this one. That is Sunset Hour. Which is their fruity perfume. And I love a good fruity perfume. And I just think that this one. Mm, it is so. This is more a fruity Trop not tropical but more like a summery a little bit more on the sweeter side this one has desert peach raspberry cashmere wood sandalwood mandarin orange pink pepper jasmine benzoin and ginger and it is it is a warm raspberry and i really do smell the raspberry and I think that this smells so summery and fresh on the skin it's so beautiful and also mixes beautifully with other like warmer scents and i think it's wonderful and my husband actually gave me this one he gave me this one for um my birthday because i used up the sample oh it's so raspberry i love it he, i used up the sample and he's like what would you like and i said you know what i just used up the sample i would love to get this one and let me see if i can just get to that one because after that the yeah the brand gold for them backs actually reached out to me and they asked me because they heard that i love the sunset hour so much from my videos and they were like can we send you sunset hour and i said you're a little bit too late i already got it as a gift from my husband for my birthday and they were like so what's your second favorite and i said my second favorite is the pacific rock moss so beautiful so they got me the big bottle and my husband got me the not mini bottle because there is a smaller version but like the the normal size i think this is a 50 right or a 30 this is a 50 and they got me the 100 so they got me the big one which i mean i'm very grateful but this one is so nice Th this notes in this one is uh, italian lemon sage moss geranium and Vir virginia cedar and for me i think there's almost like an aquatic uh, note to this one even though it doesn't say it in the notes but sometimes notes together create almost a feeling or an essence of something and for me this smells like a stream in the wood and it's like a little bit zesty from the lemon and it's just very fresh but it does smell like rock and moss there's some mineral in there it almost smells like a stream in the woods hitting the moss hitting the rocks getting that mineral in there just the freshness of the lemons it is very intoxicating i think both of these scents are meant a little bit to be a unisex but this definitely is a unisex i wear this one my husband has worn this one it is a really just beautiful a little bit on the masculine side i absolutely love it i think it's beautiful together and i also will say these two really go together if you layer these two together it just creates this wonderful beautiful like almost depth and like mis mystery to this one it turns into a mysterious fruit you heard it here first but i really like this scent and they have now just released a ginger scent and i actually did order a sample of that one because i wanted to try a sample this one smells so lovely this would be the perfect going on a summer vacation wearing your shirt a little open as like a man as well like a, a, a man's cologne just so fresh and summery but like i wear it 
all year around and I think it's beautiful and I did have a sample of that one as well and I did go through that sample too so I'm so excited to have those in like well full size bottles now we have another perfume from Kayali and this is the Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli. This is one of the fragrances that I blind bought because I really do like Kayali. I mean, everything from Kayali that I own, I've bought myself except that full size that they sent me now recently. And I thought, hmm, I thought I was gonna love this because this is rum, vanilla orchid, jasmine, vanilla, spicy notes, creme brulee, leather, tonka bean, rose, patchouli, brown sugar, and then oud, which smells a little bit like manure. Like it's a way to, it gives some depth and almost dirtiness to a perfume. And in a small portion, it can be really lovely, but sometimes it takes over and sugar, amber, musk. And I think this one, this perfume, uh, I was hoping it was gonna be like a just a little bit of a spicy vanilla with the rum in there But what it really is it's very leather. It's very oud. It's very patchouli and it's very amber And it's those scents that I feel take over sometimes and for me this is too dirty i'm using quotes like it's too dirty for me and it's just taking over too much it's bringing it into rich aunt's coat that has been hanging in the closet in the attic for 20 years and you bring it out and it smells like this it's not for me it is a little bit too old money for me it's not my journey and i think this is the only scent from kayali that I have tried where I've been like, no. And you can see how little I've used of it. I've really tried to make this work for me, but I just don't love this one. And if you have the same taste in fragrance as me, as that you like something that's unisex, you like something that has a little bit of a different note to it, it has a little bit of depth to it, but not too much, you probably will not like this either because this is on the other edge of too much. This is too much for me. This is another blind purchase uh, that I bought that I really like, but I'm putting a buyer beware on this one. This is the new fragrance from Hermes. And I have some fragrances from Hermes I really love. Hermes has a beautiful rhubarb perfume that is a wonderful unisex fruity perfume that is lovely. This is the Un Jardin à Citer. I think that is how you say it. I bought the travel size because they're expensive and I was blind buying it. This one has citrus, pistachio, olive tree, and green accord. It's very citrus, very citrus. And it's like a strong, like in your face citrus. And it has the green accord. And when it dries down, you can really smell the olive. And it gives a very, the olive and the green and the pistachio, all three of those have a very earthy green scent to them. If you do not like green scents and you think that this is going to be just another citrus perfume, you're probably not going to like this one because the earthiness of the especially olives in this one, it brings it to something totally different. It does smell, it does smell like the outdoors in the Mediterranean. It really does. I love the Mediterranean. It is my happy place. It's my favorite place in the world. And when I heard, because Citer is a Greek island, if I'm not totally mistaken, when I heard that this was going to smell like Mediterranean, literally say less, literally say less, and I blind bought it, and I love it, but it is very earthy, so do not blind buy this one. I love it, but you might not. It is not a typical citrus scent. It is definitely something different, and I do think that you need to smell this before or really know what you're getting yourself into because you might buy this and just be like, absolutely not because of the olive scent in here. This is a scent that I got sent in PR by Skin Store and I like this scent for uh, mixing. This is the uh, Ellis Brooklyn Super Amber and this is an amber musk, Virginia cedar and vanilla orchid and it is very very amber and I don't love amber that much on its own but it is the perfect perfume to bring to a very sweet fruity perfume or something that's a little bit more <sighs> ethereal or a little more, more daytime to bring some depth to it and that's what I do with both these kind of amber perfumes I also love doing it with really spicy perfumes or with lactic milky perfumes to mix them with like more everyday citrus fruity 
those kind of perfumes just to take the edge of the, the the fruitiness to make them a little bit more evening wear kind of a perfume so mixing this with other perfume makes it amazing on its own i think it's a little bit too again i'm, I'm bringing in the, the the much it's a little too much on its own for me i don't hate it but i prefer mixing it and i definitely have some perfumes in my collection that i have an own merely for mixing and i love mixing perfumes i think it is an amazing way to take a perfume from daytime to nighttime, which is something that I really enjoy. And one of my favorite things is mixing a really spicy perfume with a really fruity perfume. It's lovely. Okay, next one. <laughs> next one is something that I bought. Where do I have it? Here. Next thing is something that I bought. I blind bought this one. This is Boy Smells suede pony and i really thought i was gonna love this one because i was loving that leather perfume um ombre leather by uh, tom ford so i was really thinking this was gonna be this was gonna be the one this one is because it sounds like it's gonna be the one saffron pineapple plum cardamom are you kidding me suede violet hazelnut coconut water woodsy notes labdanum and patchouli and it is smelling 99.9% .9 suede, which is lovely, don't get me wrong, but I don't smell a lot of the other things in here. I don't think I am sophisticated, I don't think I am a, a scent nerd enough to smell the other notes. For me, this is only suede and a little bit almost smoky, like the woodsy tones. And because of the suede, of course, it's smoky. It's almost a little bit a burnt down cabin in the woods that you try to put down with a suede blanket. It's not bad, but it's not what I thought it was gonna be. Okay, now we're getting into the perfume that I got from my husband for a Christmas gift. And this has for a really long time, if you watch my fragrance um, content from before, this has been my wish list perfume for a really long time. And I could not think of a single thing that I wanted for Christmas. And my husband was like, listen, just give me, some you're gonna have to give me, some give me something to work with. And I said, you know what? I've really been wanting the Byredo Pulp. This is the fruity perfumes of my dreams. Uh, it's, oh, it's so good. This is black currant, bergamot, cardamom, fig, red apple, tiara flower, perline, peach blossom, and cedar. Screw all the other things. It smells like black currant and apple. It smells so wonderful. And there is a little bit of depth to it, almost like a little sweetness. And I think it's the praline and the cedar that's just bringing it in. And there's a little bit of spiciness. I'm guessing that's the cardamom that's speaking. But this one is so fantastic. And it reminds me of a Swedish garden. It reminds me of Swedish summer. It reminds me of my grandmother making jams and doing her own lemonade because of the black currant and the apple, because that's two ingredients that my grandmother was growing herself in the garden and she was using a lot. And it's just so refreshing and so wonderful without being the typical refreshing. This does not smell like laundry detergent. This does not smell like soap. This does not smell like a typical citrus fragrance. It doesn't smell flowery. It is just so intoxicating and so wonderful and unfortunately so expensive but i highly recommend if you love fruity perfumes or if you're looking for a fresh and uplifting everyday perfume but you don't want to get those typical clean laundry detergent perfumes definitely go and smell pulp next time you're at the byredo counter because it is just it is so intoxicating it is so wonderful and this is truly one of my favorite scents in my collection. And I am so incredibly grateful that my husband gave me this one. It also comes with a magnetic one. Byredo is a Swedish luxury perfume house, which also, of course, makes it extra exciting for me. But I love this one. I think it is wonderful. I smelled my way through all of the scents from Byredo. And this one is my favorite by far. So if you love unisex fruity perfume as much as I do, you need to smell this one. I brought out my little holder for my phone, so maybe I can have it here in front of me and like not have to hold my phone the whole time. We'll see if this is possible. Next one is actually the two perfumes that I have from Fantasy Cosmetica. And I know that these are like from a smaller indie brand. It's the first time they're doing perfumes, but I still wanted to talk about and I wanna talk about the notes because I really do appreciate these. These are only available in the US. She doesn't ship internationally. I don't know if she ships to Canada or if she ships to 
all the US territories, but I still wanted to talk about them. These were sent to me as PR. The first one is the Druid one, which is the green one. This is the more citrusy and very pine scent. And I love that because Sweden is filled with pine trees and it just makes me feel like home. This is a very homey scent for me because it smells, it's pine tree, citrus, laurel blossom, pink pepper, poppy, guaiac wood, which is oud, but this one has very little oud, patchouli, tonka bean, redwood, cedar, and amber. This one smells very fresh and very pine forest. It is a warm pine forest with the almost like the little pink pepper in here. I don't really smell the guaiac wood that much, but for me, that's a good thing. It's only here to break the sweetness and break the, the freshness, but it is very lovely, but very pine. So if you like pine, this could be for you. If you don't like pine, that might not be for you. And the next one is my favorite, which is the rogue one. And these are, of course, based on like, I think it's like Dungeons and Dragons characters. The whole brand is based on that. Uh, they make a lot of really fun stuff. This one is bergamot, cinnamon. Oh, it's so good. Bergamot, cinnamon, cloves, grapefruit, lavender, leather, lily, pepper, sugar, tobacco, vanilla, vetiver. Okay, there's a lot of notes in here, but it is a very spicy scent. And it is the cloves, the cinnamon the pepper, the sugar, the tobacco, definitely the tobacco, but both the vanilla and the sugar is really coming through and it is a sweet, spicy scent. I know it says bergamot and grapefruit, but that's not really what's coming through. This is a sweet tobacco spicy scent and it is very spicy. So if you're all about a spicy scent, this might be for you. It is a little sweet, like I said, with the sugar and the uh, the vanilla in here, you can definitely smell the sweetness. But this one, together with the fruity perfume, this one, I have been layering this one a lot with the Eden apple, the one from Kayali, the red apples. Oh my god, it's so lovely, those two together. I really love it, but I love a spicy perfume. Same here, if you don't like a spicy perfume, you you will not like this one, because it's like, this one is very pine and this one is very spicy, but they're both really nice and sophisticated. And I have not had the best luck with like smaller indie brand perfumes. I feel like a lot of them have smelled like a basement that needs to be like refurbished because your house is about to lose value because of the moist damage down there. But I really like those two and I wanted to mention them in this video. Okay, this one was an expensive investment and this one is from the brand Wilhelm Perfumery. And I only bought the small one. This is a 20 milliliter, but it's $90. So this is an expensive brand. And I <laughs> see, this is the thing when you start, like I've always loved fragrances. I've always loved perfumes. I've always have several perfumes to choose from. I've never been the signature scent. I only have one and nothing more kind of a gal. That has never been my journey. I've always had more than one to choose from. But now that I'm getting even more into fragrances and now that I've been getting more into listening to other creators talk about fragrances, you start to get into some niche perfumes and they're pricey. They're pricey. So this is the Basilico and Fellini from Wilhelm Perfumerie. And I am so impressed with this one. And I saw this at the counter of Neiman Marcus, right? I think it was Neiman Marcus here in uh, Austin, Texas. And the one, that, the woman that was helping me at the counter, she was so great and she gave us some samples as well. And my husband liked a lot of the perfumes as well. So I think we're gonna go back and maybe pick up like another one. They're expensive though. They have one that's mango. And again, I love a fruity scent. So it might be mango next time, but this one, this one, it's called base, basil and fellini, and it definitely is basil. So basil, pitaya, fig, violet, green grass, and hay, and vetiver as well. And this one is that. The notes, it very much describes this perfume. The basil, the violet, the grass, the hay, a little bit of the fig, but overall, this is a green scent. And when I say green, I don't mean like, oh my God, nature, flowers. No, skip the flowers, no flowers. A little bit of the violet, but violet is actually one of those scents that I really enjoy when it comes to flowers. Some flowers I like, most flowers I don't, but violet I really like because it, it, it's just an exciting scent to me, but this is very much basil, fig, and grass, and some violet. It is green. 
very green. And if you don't like green, if you think the idea of smelling like grass is absolutely ridiculous, you won't like this one. But if you love a green scent, this one is very refreshing, very summery, very out in the garden, out in nature, just a very summery, uplifting spring going into summer. I bought this as a spring scent and it just makes me extremely happy. It makes me feel like I smell like fun without being a typical flowery scent. And I just love a green scent and it is very different because of the basil. And again, this is one of those same as that scent that has olive in it. Don't blind buy. You need to smell it. But if you love green scents, you might love this one. This is a scent that I I'm surprised how much I love it, but I read up on the notes and again, I was starting to get into loving boozy notes in perfumes and this is Angel Share by Killian. And when I smelled it, sold. I have realized that these like sweet gourmand kind of a scents, I only like them if they're either spicy or boozy because otherwise I feel like I smell like a dessert and in a bad way I want to uh, listen I want to smell like a snack I just don't want to smell like a full-on praline like it's not my journey this oh my god this is such an again this has quickly become one of my best finds ever so I got the small size because she's expensive and I didn't know if I was going to appreciate a perfume that's as different as this one is in my collection but it is so good this is cognac and it's definitely a cognac scent definitely cognac cognac cinnamon tonka bean oak praline vanilla sandalwood and that is what this is it is cognac it is cinnamon it is spicy it is vanilla it is praline it is very sweet and spicy with the booze and something about these scents together makes it smell like apple pie to me there's not an apple tone in this according to you know, the people that know fragrances. But I am telling you right now, if someone told me, oh, this is the smell of a boozy apple pie, I'd be like, yeah, definitely. I can smell it. But it's because of the things that you think are going to go together with apple pie, the cinnamon, the sugar, the, the praline, like the tonka beans, like because you those notes go together and like, it makes you think that like it's apple pie. I got my friend Heather Austin to buy this one as well. She also loves it. And I definitely, definitely think you should give this a sniff. You can find this at Sephora. I bought it at Sephora and it is wonderful. It is one of those sexy scents. It is not too heavy to wear during the daytime. Definitely not. But for me, this is a going out, going to an event, going to dinner. Definitely one of those. I wouldn't wear this maybe going clubbing. Who am I talking? I'm, I never go clubbing. I never go on par to parties. I'm not that girl. But if I was, I would think that this is probably a little bit too sophisticated to go to like a nightclub. But like this one as a third date perfume. Wow. Now we're getting into the other milky perfume that I was talking about. And this one is from Commodity and it's just called Milk. And I got the expressive one, which is the, they have like a one that's more subtle so they have like a subtle version and then they have the expressive one and then i think it's called bold or something uh, that have like a gold text that's even more bold and like i've said in this video sometimes i feel like perfumes get to be too much so when i wanted to try this i knew i wanted to get the middle version because i don't like bold because sometimes they get to be too heavy for me. This one is Milk, Marshmallow, Natural Musk, Mahogany, and Tonka Bean. And again, this is the uh, Lactic Wonderful perfume that I talked about before. It, it's hard to explain how this milk smell. Because you smell milk and you're like, there's no way I want a perfume that smells like that. But a, a marshmallow milky perfume that has a little bit of the Tonka Bean and the Mahogany and the Musk in the bottom, it really just it's just sweet and interesting. And I, again, this one is sold at Sephora. Go to Sephora, smell it and see how you feel about it. Spray it on your skin, see how you feel. It is really sexy on its own. Again, this is a date night perfume. It is so sexy and wonderful. And again, you're like, Ugh, milk, why? But no, really sexy and wonderful. But my favorite way of wearing this is together with my fruity perfumes. It turns into fruits and milk. 
berries and milk like what's not to love this one with the eden apple this one with hermes rhubarb this one together with um I have another fruity perfume, I forgot the name of it right now. I'm trying to look and I can't remember. But anyways, this one, together with fruity perfumes, it's just really wonderful. And again, it's hard to explain how this milk smell, but lactic perfumes are very sexy and sweet without being too cotton candy. I can't do cotton candy perfumes. It's not my journey. This perfume, I'm fairly sure that I have reviewed this on my channel and said that I didn't like it, but I think I've changed my mind. I've come around to this perfume. I have started to appreciating it for what it is. And this is the Kayali Love Fest Burning Cherry. And I think with this one, the way I didn't like this first is because I think it turned into a little bit too florally for me. This one is Burning Cherry, Raspberry, Bergamot, Perline, Heliotrope, Damask Rose, Jasmine Sandbag, Palo Santo, which is oh, a note that I really, really love. Tonka bean, guacamole. Uh, oh my God, there's so many things in here, but just a lot of things in here to give this one a lot of base, a lot of just warmth in the base. It really smells like a sweet torched sherry in the beginning. It really smells like that and the praline in there almost makes it smell a little bit like marzipan because there is something about cherries together with sweetness it makes it smell like marzipan and at first i didn't like it but i've actually been wearing this a lot as of late and i've warmed up to it there is something about this that i didn't like it at first and i think the reason why i didn't like it is because i thought i was gonna get cherry raspberry bergamot I thought that this was going to be a, and I don't know why when we look at the base notes, but I thought that this was going to be a very fresh and fruity and cherry one. And what it really is, is, is more of a warm and inviting fruity scent that has some flowers in there. But I do feel like Kayali is really good at having a lot of floral notes in there, but not getting them to take over because it isn't the floral perfume. They're there to bring some kind of a just, I don't know, make sense of the perfume and give it a little bit of sophistication. But it is very warm and it's very inviting. And I thought this was going to be a spring and summer fruity scent, but it's more a warm and inviting fall and winter scent. So uh, you can see, I've used quite a lot of this. I really have come around to this one. This was one of those that I needed to change how I thought this was going to be. And once I realized that no, it's not what you thought it was going to be, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad perfume. So now that I've like, you know, alter your expectation a little bit, I do really like it, but not for the same reasons as maybe I thought. Okay, here comes another one that I blind bought and I was like, <laughs> I, again, I'm so in love with the leather, ombre leather by Tom Ford that I was thinking that I was going to be out here finding good leather perfumes. This is from Boy Smells, this is Cowboy Kush. Um, this is this is not Tom Ford's ombre leather. Let me just put it like that. That's not what this is at all. So this one is hazelnut, white leather, mandarin orange, tobacco, saffron, cannabis, suede, labdanum, tonka bean, patchouli, oud. That sounds lovely. This one is better than the other one. The suede pony is very suede. This one is better, in my humble opinion. This one has more tones to it. I can smell a little bit of the orange in here. There is a little bit of fruitiness. It is the suede, which gives the smokiness. It comes through more than you would think because it is like a white leather mandarin orange, but it is more a fruity suede. A fruity suede with a little bit of tobacco in there. There, there is more nuances to this one. And I will say, I definitely smell the hazelnut in here. So off the two, where's the other one that I talked about? It is right here, the suede pony. I definitely prefer the cowboy kush over the suede pony. This one is just suede. It could have just been named suede or just like just suede. This one, it has some nuances. There is a little bit to it. There's definitely hazelnut. There's definitely a little bit of the citrus, the tobacco, a little bit of the sweetness. There's more to this. So if you are looking for a suede or a smoky leather perfume and you want a little bit more dimension, I would definitely recommend this one over the other one. And again, you can get it in a small bottle. So blind buying isn't as scary when you can buy a small one. Let me talk about my last perfume is actually not something that I have bought. It is a sample. 
that I have almost used up. I got this sample again at Neiman Marcus and I almost don't want to spray it because I love it so much. And this is Inicio, 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 Inicio. I find it, I don't know how to say that, but this is Inicio Perfume Privé and this is Rehab. <sighs> I heard a lot of people um, saying that Inicio was making a really good perfume that was called Oud for Greatness. And they were saying that, oh, it's so good. They were saying that even if you don't love Oud, you're gonna like this one. Not true. I don't like Oud and I don't like Oud for Greatness. But when I was there talking to the woman at the counter and I was explaining what I like, she was like, you're gonna like this one. So this one, the notes of this one is not what I am smelling. This one says lavender, bergamot, vetiver, cedar, patchouli, sandalwood, musk, and guaiacwood. I don't smell any of that. Maybe a little bit of bergamot. Lavender? Absolute. I hate lavender, but I don't smell lavender. I smell sweet, spicy, not tobacco, but almost like the remnant of tobacco. Like someone went past this perfume with tobacco. It's like almost, almost got a Coca-Cola tone to it because of course I, I sense spices in here and spices and citrus together does give us the idea of Coca-Cola because it is two big building blocks of Coca-Cola is spices and citrus. If you didn't know, now you know. But this one doesn't say that it has any spices in here, but I'm just like, are you sure? Because it's so spicy. The spices, the citrus, the warmth of the cedar and the sandalwood. It smells absolutely freaking fantastic. One of the best scents I've ever smelled in my life, but it is a $200 scent. Hence why I'm still using this, this little thing imaging, because that is a lot of money. And I will say one of the bad things about this one is that it doesn't last too long on the skin but it lasts and smells really good on your clothes as well so when i use this one i try to spray me and then i try to do a spritz on my clothes as well just to make sure that it's like lasting on me longer but this is just so sexy it's yeah it's almost giving me coca-cola but not really truly for me one of the best scents that i have smelled because it's bringing two things together that i love which is spices and citrus. Even though the notes are telling me a different story, that's not what I'm smelling. And sometimes it doesn't matter what people tell you that the scent is supposed to be about. If that's not what you're smelling, it doesn't matter. What you smell is what you smell. And perfumes are so individual as well. I hope you enjoyed this haul. I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about these notes. I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about what I love in perfumes and what I don't love in perfumes. I will link everything down below in case you're interested in checking any of these out again, or in case you're wondering, maybe you missed the name of it or something like that. I will link them down below and I will list them down below in the order that I mentioned them so that you can easily find them again if there's anything you're wondering about. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like it if you enjoyed it because these kind of videos usually don't get picked up by the YouTube algorithm on my channel. So if you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate if you left a thumbs up and maybe left a comment as well. And I will see you really soon again in a new video. Bye!